Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us in gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 3rd of June. Hope you're all doing well. And uh, before we get started, just a quick reminder to please like, subscribe and share the video content across your social media platforms if you find the analysis that I do every week useful. Uh, and yeah, getting into the uh, the week ahead from trading economics and in the United States the labor market report will take center stage so that's um NFP coming on Friday investors will also closely monitor jolts job openings ISM manufacturing and services PMI factory orders and foreign trade data globally attention will be on interest rate decisions from the European Central Bank and Bank of Canada There's, those are going to be two really important um uh, news events this week inflation rates will be released for switzerland gdp growth rate will be rates will be reported for australia and also key indicators to watch include manufacturing pmis for china switzerland and canada as well as services pmis for china additionally foreign trade data will be released for china australia and canada in germany the focus will be on factory orders industrial production and the unemployment rate alongside euro area retail so lots going on uh this week the main really uh i would say news uh to kind of watch for is going to be definitely the jobs report uh in the us as well as the european central bank and bank of canada interest rate decisions and so uh looking at uh the week ahead actually before we get into the week ahead let's look at some of the uh, trade analysis and some trades that i took uh in the previous week and the first uh trade is the euro swiss franc so the euro swiss uh fundamentally i want to be uh long on the euro against the swiss i'm not long on the euro against um for example the uh, the dollar but there are actually reasons now for me fundamentally to look to buy the euro one of them being that there could be what is known as a hawkish cut and typically cuts are um do de devalue and depreciate a currency and that's that's what they're designed to do um but in fact um if the bank of uh, central european central bank um uh, cut but they don't um, signal that they're going to be cutting a bit more or they're at the really the beginning of their cutting cycle then that could be known as what is a hawkish uh, cut and I do have a video on that on YouTube um, what is a hawkish rate cut forex fundamental analysis so uh, on the top right hand side of the screen you should see a link there so you can um, click on that and watch that video so going into the euro swiss and uh, it was really uh, the, the green zone is like a, dem a daily demand zone. <clears throat> and just because prices come into a daily demand zone doesn't mean that it's going to react from there. Right. Uh, one of the techniques and strategies that I use also as well in, in alignment with uh, demand zones and supply zones is uh, stop hunts. And um, I had seen a stop hunt set up, um, setting up around just below this uh, demand zone. And so uh, when prices came back into uh, the uh, the area, or just be kind of broke below the uh, the uh, support zone, uh, creating the, the stop hunt and then prices came back inside. I entered uh, around this area here and managed to get a nice one-to-one uh, -one trade. Now, I took 50% off, so this is really a break-even trade um, because I'm anticipating uh, this week for there to be a, a hawkish cut um, and prices actually move to the upside. Now, I have no idea, no one does, will have no idea as to if this is going to be the turning point or if, for example, um, there is a, you know, price may move to the downside, for example, around this area here, and then uh, there could be, uh, you know, um, a reversal around here, right? So this might not be where the reversal is. Prices could drift down as we get to, you know, a bit closer to the, uh, the uh was it on yeah the press conference which is on the 6th of june and so um you know we could see something like that or we could see you know prices start to re you know reverse from now again with 
trading, it's a probabilities game. If I get stopped out on that position, it's fine because I'm actually at break even now, taking 50% profits off at a one to one. And if prices come down and stop me out, I'll re enter again in anticipation of a hawkish cut because there is evidence that they uh, that is um, likely to be. Uh, the outcome and um, but if not then it is what it is right uh, we just move on to the next trade but I do think that the euro swiss is <clears throat> in a decent um uh, a decent price anyway to look for uh, some longs in that euro swiss so either right now might be the reversal or if prices come down further down to the 9570s 0 0.9 sorry 0 0.9750s 0 0.9730s I'll also look for that daily demand zone to look for a buy trade so so far so good on that gold um was the uh trade on Friday that we took and uh really the analysis was uh more to do with um a bit of a demand zone here now it wasn't the strongest demand zone in the world um there was some demand here that where prices had pushed up from there um and prices came in now i was anticipating that the uh, data for the um for the for the dollar on Friday, so core prices PCE uh, would come out slightly lower, which it did. Now initially, prices did react to that on the Friday, so we had a bit of a push up here um, on the hourly, and then prices went to the downside. Right now, um, my entry was the day before, and it was an eight-hour candle where we had this nice. Uh, pin bar uh, engulfing candle and so um what i you know typically do is if i'm bullish on a on a on a you know an asset then i'll try and get in maybe about a day before maybe two days before uh the big event and then uh, look to position myself at these lows so if prices are coming down and i want to be a buyer brilliant right excellent then i'm looking for a setup but if prices are going higher as we head into an event and if I'm bullish, then I'm not going to be buying at highs. I'm waiting for a pullback before looking at going long. So that's how and that's what I was looking for. So we kind of pulled back into this decent zone here and then uh, got in just before and then looked for a long trade. But we haven't hit any of my profit targets uh, just yet. But also as well, um, I also enter into uh, three positions if price allows me to meaning that I set a market order and then I set two pending orders so one at 50% and one at about 95% now prices have pulled back um, and triggered me into all three positions so currently um, I'm in three positions now uh, my stop loss is at the same place for all of these positions and for example what I'm looking for now is on this last this final position I'm looking for a one-to-one -one on that one let's go down into like the into like the one hour for example so I've been triggered in and I if, if prices come up to around this two three three eight six area then I will take the one-to-one -one profit off of that and then I will also look to um take some profit off if we hit a one-to-one -one on uh, the 50% the order, which will be around here. And then what I'll do is I'll look to swing trade uh, the market order if we continue going higher. And then that will be where I will look for the uh, the move, you know, two, three, four, five to ones on this type of trade. So let's see what happens here. Of course, prices could reverse and I could get stopped out on all three positions, right? If I do, that's fine. There is... Um, demand zone just further down now i do think the closer we get to the rate cutting cycle which is looking like september on the dollar um we should look for or i should anyway I'm not financial advice for anyone else but i'm looking for um, a move to the upside so um, whether it comes down into this zone or go straight through that zone and down into you know that demand zone my bias is to the is to the long um is to go uh, for gold to appreciate <clears throat> And continue to appreciate so um i don't mind taking two three four um you know trades if i know my upside is going to net me you know uh, multiples of my losses so let's see what happens 
with with gold going into uh, next week and also um, into the future anyway. So those are the two trades uh, that I'm currently, uh, the, the new trades that I'm in anyway. And I've been, um, took some profit on um, uh, some of the trades that I was in, uh, which was like, for example, the, uh, the dollar Swiss as well. But um, yeah, so that's really where I am with the trades. Now getting into the uh the actual analysis for the week and uh we are on we're on the dollar index and this is the equally weighted dollar index i find it uh, a lot better than using uh the dxy or the usdx and uh, in the top right hand side you'll see uh, a link to a video that i created where you can uh you know basically input the calculations and the reasons why I use the equally weighted dollar index. So um, dollar at the moment, I do think that we may be coming off the boil in terms of dollar strength as we get closer to um, uh, into, to, to rate cutting territory. Now, <clears throat> fundamentally, again, on the um, on the Friday, we did have as I alluded to already, that the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of underlying U.S. inflation moderated in April, uh, a step in the right direction for policymakers looking for reassurance they can start lowering interest rates. And it says here the report offers Fed officials some solace about the pathway for inflation after progress on price pressures was interrupted in the first quarter treasury yields moved lower and s p 500 index futures gained and the dollar index declined swap traders still expect fed to cut rates at least once this year now if we go to the fed watch tool the cme fed watch tool if you click on september what we see is um, this area here, which is basically the current probability of a, you know, either rate cuts or rate um, or, or rate holds. And a week ago, um, it was about a fifty percent probability of a rate hold. And um, the longer the Fed holds, looking to hold rates in September, is the stronger the dollar and more likely will, will appreciate. Now, a decrease in that. Um, the probability of a hold, meaning the increase of a potential cut, yeah, means that the dollar should weaken. And that's what we saw. So a week ago, we were at 50% chance of a hold. And then the chances of a hold now have decreased. And in fact, the chances of a cut have increased. And so that's the reason why you're seeing the dollar uh, start to sell off. So the more we start, the market starts to price in a rate cut is the more you will see the dollar devalue. So that will be normally directly re reflected on, on on a price chart. And so, again, Friday, we saw the uh, the dollar index start to move to the downside. Now, um, is the dollar a sell against every currency? Of course not. You have to um, look at the dollar um, uh, and compare it really to other currencies and where they are on their interest rate cutting cycle. And uh, the, really, it's understanding which central banks are looking to cut first versus which central banks are looking to cut um uh, last and that's really kind of like the more the, the basic side of things and i'm going to get into really again the euro side of things in terms of uh, a hawkish cut because that's more nuanced and a bit more advanced but in terms of the dollar i think you can find reasons to buy the the, the, the dollar of course um in terms of they are one of the uh, currencies and the central banks that are going to cut rates later than uh, some central banks like, for example, the euro, the Canadian dollar, the Swiss franc, for example, and even the pound. But at the same time, um, there are reasons to sell the dollar as rate cuts potentially be get priced in into September. So um, you can find reasons to either buy, like I said, even in around this area or look to sell potentially if prices do come back up to this uh, demand zone. So I'm a bit more neutral on the dollar after Friday's um, after Friday's uh, uh, data. And let's see what happens um, with, for example, this week with non-farm payrolls. And if the economy is showing, um, you know, that employment as well is starting to, um, you know, uh, 
go lower and unemployment is starting to go higher, then that adds to that will definitely add to the uh, weakness or potential weakness in the dollar, at least in the short term. So either way it goes, this, this is where you're looking for confluences with your trades on certain currency pairs. Dollar yen and dollar yen, uh, we pulled back up really to this uh, wide supply zone right here. Kind of draw it from here if you want to, somewhere around there. Now the yen, uh, personally my bias is still looking, I'm still looking for long trades on, on the yen and it's really based on um, uh, the carry trade uh, idea, meaning that uh, it's a difference between interest rates. So the dollar at the moment is I think about 5.5% and the, uh, the yen, I think they're at zero or 0.1%, 0 something like that. Um, and so, you know, even though the Bank of Japan are hiking rates, because, you know, if you basically buy the dollar, right, and, and hold the dollar, you're getting a 5.5% interest rate. Even though the Bank of uh, Japan are hiking interest rates, it's not enough to entice traders to basically take money out of a higher yielding uh, uh, asset or currency and put it into a lower yielding one, right? Because, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't do that in real life, right? So ultimately, um, the, the closer the gap, right, the closer the gap, the, the more enticing it might be. But for now, I think the gap is still a bit too wide for traders to be put off um, uh, by selling the dollar for you know for 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 yen for the yen, but we do have some interesting uh, news for the yen, which may actually appreciate the yen uh, at least in the short term. And so it says here, investors will learn Friday if Japan intervened to prop up the yen during last month with the beleaguered currency vulnerable to a sell off if authorities were absent or had to spend much more than expected. And so it says uh, here, how much they use to support the yen will be the market's focus, says Ses uh, Shasuke Yamada, head of J uh, Japan currency and rate strategy at Bank of America Securities Japan. If they show they needed to use a large amount to uh, to put a pause on the depreciation trend that raises concern over the capacity to continue while a small amount would mean intervention was quite effective. So what does that mean on a price chart? So what that saying is, is that this was where the last intervention was. Now, if it was a large intervention, yeah, then the chances of them intervening again at this area is probably less than likely simply because they've they put a lot of intervention um you know uh bought a lot of yen but really with limited results so will they do it again right will they intervene again if they put a, if this turns out that it was quite a large amount of intervention the chances are the, the market is saying that no uh, they 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 probably won't intervene again at this level, yeah. But if they put a small amount of intervention, yeah, then um they will likely do it again, yeah, because it was only really a small amount. They only bought the yen, um, didn't pay too much. So the the likelihood is is that they'll likely do it again in and around this area. So they will likely defend this area if it does. Uh, come out that the Bank of Japan uh, didn't need to use a large amount or, a, or they used a small amount, right? So there we go. So small amount would mean that intervention was quite effective. So um, let's see what happens uh, Friday and um, and see if um, uh, what the intervention levels, you know, were. And uh, that will definitely have an effect on whether... Uh, you know, you would want to look for short trades in and around this area because you will be helped by the Bank of Japan looking to intervene again if it was a small amount that they intervened here. So um, technically, you will want to look for, you could look for some buy trades, um, but just be mindful if you are looking for buy trades. I wouldn't necessarily buy it if prices come up here and then you get a sharp 
you know, move to the downside. Um, if prices just naturally drift down here, then that's a lot better, right? Because if it if it if it get a sharp move, then you're looking at obviously intervention, and you don't really want to stand in the way of intervention um, until really the dust kind of settles. So um, that's really the areas where I'm looking for. Um, uh, or the strategy I would look towards buying the uh, the yen only if it naturally drifts down. If it comes up here and then we get a sharp move, then I'm not looking to buy in and around um, or buy this pair for uh, until really kind of like the, the dust settles. So um, so yeah, there's a strategy right there. The uh, the dollar Swiss. So again, I was saying that. Um, I ended up getting stopped out and I put my stop loss underneath a level of resistance here and I got stopped out when prices spiked down on the uh, on the Tuesday but I got in here and I was already in profit anyway so it was just a little bit I had left. I was hoping that prices would have come up at least another something like 20 pips I think above this level but it just didn't uh, reach there and uh, the rest of my smaller position was stopped out for a for a profit so uh overall the trade was profitable but where where we're at now on the um on the dollar swiss is this area here so we've got demand prices are coming down we've also got an area of looks like what support and resistance in here and so um personally again I would probably say if I'm looking at the fundamentals, I really would want more of a uh, a move, look for a move to the upside as the Swiss franc uh, are still looking to cut rates so far. And um, and yeah, that really should be where you're looking for, for buy trades. Now, again, it's not saying that the prices are going to reverse here. Nobody knows. But if prices don't reverse there, then you can look for a buy trade here or it would be really all the way down at this demand zone here but again it does depend upon what happens with um uh, this week with the data we've got some supply in and around the, the the highs as well if you are looking to short the dollar then i personally wouldn't really be buying it uh, or looking to short the uh the dollar uh, with the swiss franc there are stronger currencies to uh to buy against the uh, the dollar um, dollar CAD, and again, this is a pair that I would be looking for more long trades, especially this week. Um, the Bank of Canada has their announcement on Wednesday, yeah, Bank of Canada on the 5th of June. And so if they do a surprise, actually, I wouldn't say surprise cut, it's actually 50-50 at the moment. Um in terms of probabilities, whether they're going to uh, uh, hike or not. If they do hike, I'm sorry, talking about hikes, uh, if they do cut, right, because it's really whether they cut or hold, if they do uh, cut rates, then you're likely to see, of course, prices bounce off. If they hold rates, then you could see prices actually go beyond this uh, demand zone. There is uh, a bit of demand and I say a bit of, but there's a lower demand zone down here. So, you know, prices could actually actually end up, um, this could strengthen the uh, the Canadian dollar if they do end up holding rates. If you're looking to uh, short then and waiting for a pullback, then I think the nearest pullback is going to be somewhere around uh, this supply zone for a buy of the Canadian dollar and a sell of the... Um, of the uh, the dollar but at the moment my bias is still looking for uh, buy trades so that's really where I am uh, in my bias at the moment until obviously Wednesday and then the dust kind of settles and we can see where we are uh, British pound uh, dollar so the pound really kind of going from strength to strength Technically, you've got nice demand zone, which we ended up bouncing off of from there. In fact, we can drag this all the way down, and then the nearest demand zone uh, is going to be around here, right on the daily. Now, fundamentally, the uh, the pound, I think, uh, where were we? Sorry, UK. All right. So the uh, the pound has been um, 
a decent buy since last week where I think it was uh, inflation. I think it was inflation came out higher than uh, than forecast, which basically pushed back a, um, a rate cut from June to August. And so uh, that ended up strengthening uh, the pound, which is the reason why we're seeing the pound kind of grind a bit higher now. Um, one of the risk um, factors for the uh, for the pound is going to be the elections. So uh, pound sterling here uh, it says we have uh, pound sterling has taken news of a July fourth uh, general election in its stride, hitting multi week highs against the euro. But some analysts say the currency could wobble if Labour's sizable advantage in the polls declines. So the thinking behind this is simple. The pound likes certainty, and right now, the solid Labour majority indicated by the polls offers that certainty. So as long as there's a Labour majority, yeah, the market will like certainty, meaning that the pound should uh, be a bit more stable. But should the Conservative Party manage to whittle down Labour's lead, the outcome of the election becomes more uncertain and money markets show investors are prepared for some volatility in the pound around the, uh, July the 4th, which means that basically uh, the pound would likely sell. There's going to be a lot more volatility. So, you know, traders are going to probably remove some of their bullish or hawkish positions. And so you could get a bit more of a sell-off. Now, um, would I buy the pound up at these highs? Nope. I'm looking for more of a pullback into at least the bottom end of this demand zone. If we can get a pullback all the way down into the one two fives, that would be nice. And not necessarily even against, I wouldn't buy the, the, the pound against the dollar, to be fair. It'd be against another currency, but I'm still looking for more of a pullback um, on the pound overall against uh, many currencies and many pound crosses before looking at going long. But if you are looking at going long on the pound dollar then it would really to have I think I'd rather buy at the 12644 that would represent more of a bargain rather than trying to buy at these highs now if you're looking to buy uh the dollar against the pound and again there are better uh trades if you're looking to uh buy the uh, the dollar uh, against any other currency it really wouldn't be against the pound but uh, if you are, then really these are the levels you're looking at. Um, you've got a nice resistance, resistance, resistance zone within this uh, wide area of supply. So um, you could look for prices as it comes up to this area or just a bit higher before looking at going uh, short. But um, yeah, this isn't really a pair that I'm interested in at the moment. Pound, yen and the pound, yen. Again, we're just seeing... Uh, the pound go from strength to strength and the carry trade really playing out right so the carry trade idea where you've got you know you're buying a higher a currency with a higher rate is playing out and uh, we've reached really these highs of supply we kind of popped up above it a little bit of a stop hunt here but now again i think if it comes out that the uh, the intervention for the yen um, was quite small the last time then I think the upside is definitely going to be capped I think we should end up you know moving to the downside but um, if not then and if it was a large uh, if, it, if this intervention was you know end up being quite large then in fact I think um, ultimately you know we should still see more upside so I think more of a pullback just like the uh, the uh, dollar yen i think any pullbacks down to these demand zones as long as it's not you're not standing in the way of any kind of intervention i think a decent uh buy trades uh, to continue looking for buys against the uh the yen looking at the euro dollar <clears throat> and so the euro dollar uh this week uh we did um have um you know prices move to the upside I ended up getting nicked out on uh, my sec um, my second position on this. So, um, yeah, I'd entered in and around here, trailed my stop down to just above this this high here, the swing high, and then ended up being stopped out in the second part of my trade. So um, it is what it is. It was a profitable trade anyway, so that's all right. Now, um, in terms of uh, supply, I think we've got supply around here. So if you are looking to buy the dollar, 
against the euro then you're looking for really prices to come up to around here before looking for a short now again alluding to the uh, hawkish a uh, hawkish cut you would really have to wait for price to come down into this zone you could actually even wait for um, prices to come down from an intraday perspective uh, just beyond this area here and this is what i would term a capture pain relief zone a cpr zone cpr demand zone in and around here from an intraday perspective you can look at my cpr um uh, strategy on youtube if you have a if you do a search on youtube <clears throat> so if prices do come back down into this area just before the uh the announcement and the, and the uh ecb um uh, statement and it is hawkish then i think that is going to be a nice zone if not then you're looking at a buy trade here now looking at again the euro channel um it says here that economists are dialing back their expectations for how far the european central bank will lower interest rates after it starts cutting next week according to bloomberg survey and that's really the essence of what a hawkish um uh a hawkish cut is is that it's not really about the cut itself because the cut has been priced in it's more about what the central bank would do after the cut which is what makes it a hawkish cut um, and if you scroll down it says here we expect divergences among the doves and the hawks in the council to emerge with the former keen to remove all policy restrictions and the latter wanting to move cautiously until they feel confident that the inflation is under control, says Fabio Balboni, uh, an economist at HSBC. That might make it hard for the ECB to provide any steer about the future path of rates beyond the present meeting. That's what makes it hawkish, which could contribute to create uncertainty and volatility in the market. Notice how they use the word volatility in terms of, um, you know, not necessarily uh, more downside but you know uh, the opposite direction al almost and it says here as well which is important traders have paired bets recently on how many rate cuts they expect the ECB to, to deliver this year they now fully price two moves in one in th and and one in three odds of a third compared with just one reduction with a 20 percent chance of a second for the US so um, it's interesting that they're pricing out um, further rate cuts um, or the amount of rate cuts which is what makes this hawkish and that actually may start to push the euro higher against the dollar so textbooks would say you know that the um that dollar should be the one to strengthen because they are cutting last but also as well any changes in the expectation of future cuts can be uh, positive um for the um for a currency even if you know and and and, and changes meaning that the uh, they are reducing those cuts so if the market is starting to reduce cuts for the euro then what you're likely to see in fact is the euro strengthen yeah so i think if they do a hawkish cut a lot of traders are going to be caught going the wrong side because you're going to have traders who and i get it you know the textbooks do say you know if they cut rates then um you know prices should move to the downside right the euro should should get weaker but um you know if you're more you know if you're more nuanced a bit more advanced you'll understand that uh, the, the cut has already been priced in right and now it's really about just understanding where you know what they're going to do in the future and so if they if if, if the devaluation or level of devaluation is being priced out of the market it means that in fact the euro should strengthen so you're going to have retail traders look to go short likely depending on where they are of course or where price is right on the cut and prices may actually start to go down on the cut right to draw those traders in but then if you know at the press conference you know christine lagarde starts to say well we're not going to you know uh, cut rates or we're uncertain whether we're going to cut rates beyond um you know uh, beyond july or july looks very uncertain then you're likely to see in fact a sharp reversal um when it comes to the uh 
when it comes to the euro. And it might not necessarily be against the dollar per se, but it will be against uh, a lot of other currencies that are considered maybe a bit weaker than the euro. So let's see what happens uh, next week. Euro yen, um, again, euro yen, pretty much the same as uh, euro pound, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, uh, no, the pound yen and the dollar yen, which is basically, it really just depends on what the intervention, uh, the scale of intervention was. So um, if intervention was small, then you're likely to see intervention again at these levels potentially, and that could push prices down. If it was large, then I would say look for pullbacks, look for demand pullbacks to look to go long the euro somewhere around here. So uh, that's really what you're looking for. The euro pound, euro pound, um, out of the two, really, the pound should be more of a buy. But again, we could see a bit more upside if we get a hawkish cut. And so um, when it comes to demand, there is a demand zone there. In fact, I'm going to start demand really from, from here. Now, it's not the strongest area of demand, but we do have demand there. I think if we do get a pullback into this area as we get the uh, potential for a hawkish cut, then I think the prices will move to the upside. If it is a dovish cut, for example, if this is a dovish cut, meaning that they start to, the ECB say that we're likely to cut in July, etc., then this is likely to, you know, break through that area, right? And it's, and again, on, on all uh, currencies and all euro crosses, you're likely to see the euro just really start to um, devalue. So yeah, let's see what happens with with the uh, with the euro pound this week. Uh, I think the nearest area to look for a short though is going to be way up here. I don't think prices are going to get up here anytime soon, unless there's obviously some sort of surprise with the um, with the uh, with the pound. But um, let's see what happens this week. Uh, you, uh, Aussie dollar. So again, Aussie dollar. The Australian dollar being one of the last central banks to cut rates, you, you'll see in this play out in the market as the Australian dollar is uh, making higher highs, right? So buy there, buy there. Now, um, any pullbacks, if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar, I think a fresher area of demand will be a better area to look for. Um, uh, trade, if you're looking for short trades, meaning you're looking to buy the US dollar, over the uh, the Australian dollar, there could be some maybe risk off sentiment coming into the market. Then I think these highs are going to be decent for a short trade. But that's really where we are with this currency pair. Not looking to trade this at the moment. And finally, gold. And um, again, just uh, either looking for some trades intraday trades right now or looking for a pullback into a deeper zone getting a cheaper price before going long and again really kind of looking at the macro side of things you would think that the dollar should and again should it's defied really a all expectation the dollar at the moment um dollar should get weaker and as long as we get uh, increases and in the, in the data really kind of supports uh, more cuts in september then we should see gold start to uh, to rally a bit more. So yeah, that's really where we are. So I think any pullbacks into these demand zones, I think for me anyway, are buying more buying opportunities. Um, but if we do get any surprises with the dollar, of course, and the dollar, you know, is 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 starts to you know get stronger and the data again starts to outperform then you could look for either some sell trades here if prices pull back or if price pull back up to these highs you could start to see some short trades around there but um yeah let's see what happens really kind of we're in that kind of data dependent um uh data dependency mode at the moment the data needs to need to support the narrative and so let's see what happens. So that's it for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the analysis and found it useful. Uh, take care and um, speak to you all soon. Have a great week.